Hey, what's going on, youtube -less EXO, coming at you with a Sony Vegas Pro 10.0 video tutorial. Gotten a lot of requests on how to make custom YouTube video thumbnails. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through the processes of just how to do that with a 4-3 aspect ratio. So uh, let's go ahead and start going here. The first step is to import into Sony Vegas 10.0 an already made video. This will make it a lot easier when you're starting to select the snapshots from each individual frame that you want to use for your thumbnail. Try to close up all the stuff in the background, that way Sony Vegas can run a little bit more faster for you. It just helps out in the long run. The first thing you're going to want to do is change the aspect ratio. See that like right there? You're going to want to change it from on the timeline right here to 4.3, well colon 3. It's a 4.3 aspect ratio which makes it easier for YouTube to make the resolution fit in that little tiny box that people look at. This is when you start selecting the areas on the video that you already know will be a good backdrop. And as you can see, I had a good idea of what I wanted of when the uh, subwoofers were on the ground right there. I think I'll go back to it in a second. See right here? I figured this would be a good backdrop. I click Take Snapshot, and then I start to pick out other areas in the video that would be appropriate for something in the same frame, but a little bit smaller to take up some of the space. It's usually good for a subwoofer spot, maybe a tech spot. Um, or maybe even some borders with some chroma keying and I think I might be able to use that but it's again just finding every single possible image that can be advantageous to you when making the video thumbnail so I think this is pretty sweet I'm gonna find that one more time skip a couple frames ahead I'll be able to mask, the, mask that completely out so I'll take a picture of that and I think I'm pretty much done so I'm gonna delete the top video bam and I'm gonna delete the bottom audio because we don't have any audio in this right now so the next step is to get yourself the images that you've already done, put them in order so you know which one is your base and which one you want to use to, as a on top layer. Insert that layer right on top by just clicking right click, insert video layer. Now you're going to want to mask out all the areas that you were thinking of prior. This subwoofer right here is going to need it pretty much around the whole thing. So what it involves is, is going around the whole entire subwoofer, so you're etching around it so you're cutting out the space that is around the subwoofer so it turns into complete black and you now have the ability to do chroma key which is to take out the areas of green in between the baskets that you see there so you won't be able to see the fact that there's grass as a background. I'll go ahead and fast forward it a little bit so once we get done with it and here we are now almost done okay now we're ready to do some resizing which write that button right there on your next to your timeline 3d source alpha start playing around with the sizing and you can start to rotate as well so what we're going to need to do now is resize both of these to a more appropriate size that way we can utilize them in this photo okay so now we have to get down to the nitty gritty we're going to go back into the subwoofer that we've already done the masking around but now we have to get it very very detailed so we're going to zoom in and change the tool over to a general tool that way we're going to be able to um, edit all of these individual key points and the reason why we're doing this is to make sure that the background around all the shadows and the grass and the top of the subwoofer surround we don't want there to be that much of a indication that there is a mask there so we have to go around to the whole subwoofer and make sure that she's all ready to go. That's the way that we make sure that there's no shadows or any lines that wouldn't make sense. So I'll go around this whole subwoofer and make sure that she's not touching around the whole thing. That'll probably take another 10 minutes, so I'll fast forward that right now. This is probably gonna take a long time. So again, just go around the whole subwoofer, making sure to keep the mask in. Right here is a perfect example of just correcting the mask right there, absolutely just making sure that there's nothing in the background that can come piercing through it to make sure the light is even and uh, makes sense to when you look at it. So now we can put these in the correct position. Now that we have the, the sizing right, we want to get it just a little tiny bit smaller so we can fit it into the picture more cohesively. And I think I want the bottom left one to have a tilt, so I'm going to add that in just a little bit. Once I freaking figure out where I want to put this subwoofer, when you start to adjust all these settings right here just with your mouse, that's called scrubbing. And then I think that'll do it pretty good. I want to tilt this one just the slightest little bit, so I'll give it a couple little, uh, I'll adjust it a little bit right there just with my mouse. Now this is how I get my borders and my little vignettes on all my photos. Now if you don't know what vignetting is, it's a small black border around the edges of the um, peripherals of the camera lens. It has a little bit of vignetting, they call it black around the edges. And so I wanted, I always add that to all my videos. Um, uh, video thumbnails. It, it ties it in a, a lot better just to when you initially look at it. I'm just going to turn my border up to about, I don't know, uh, like 0.1 something. And that should pretty much do it. And that's how I get these little marks on the side of the screen. Right Now you might be thinking I'm going through a lot of work just to be doing a video thumbnail. But to tell you the truth, I go through a lot of work to make my videos. Even though it might take a few, you know, maybe an extra half hour 
every video. So now we're going to get into some color corrections now with the base layer. We have uh, my buddy Timmy here. I'm going to click color corrector right there and gradient map. Gradient map is a good way to um, increase the black restoration in your videos. Some of the shadows that are increased with the auto brightness on your video timeline can often be um, counteracted with a simple gradient map plugin. We're doing chroma keying right now and like I said chroma keying is to um, eliminate all the unwanted video footage in certain areas that are um, different color than that of the chroma key. Say if you have um, a black background with a white object and you want to get rid of the black background, you can chroma key all of the black colors in that particular frame. So now the next step, as we already have these both chroma keyed, and you can see through them to see the cardboard box beyond and Timmy's, right below Timmy's leg there, we can start to do a little bit more chroma keying on the other layer, um, excuse me, color correction on the other layers. Turning the saturation up to anything beyond um, uh, 1.277, it restores the colors to a great front and I've been using that uh, setting for a while now. So now that we got that color correction set with the foreground, um, some of the objects in it. So now we're going to do a little bit of a, um, we're going to insert some text right now. And this is pretty much what makes it a uh, video thumbnail, like a good old old fashioned video thumbnail. You'll see a lot of words that you've always wanted on a video thumbnail to like catch people's attention. So I think in this one I'm just going to put a simple type X and you have to, you know, spend a whole lot of time to find the type, the type of t fonts that you want. I'll show you what I mean by doing individual layers for just one word. So let's try to find the right uh, font here for the type. That in itself can be a whole friggin' journey to try to find that. I like that uh, font, that was pretty good. We're gonna draw some shadows on it by going to the media generator button, which is located on the top right, go to effects, and we're gonna click in drop shadow, and we're gonna click in uh, draw outline, just so we can have some definition in the background there, so when people are first looking at it, they can actually see it from a distance. We are gonna actually have to turn this on to 3D source alpha, which means to take your video layer and turn it into a 3D video layer, which enables you to start doing changes like this. As you can see now, the text is starting to come at you a little bit more in a 3D fashion. That's because we've enabled the 3D source alpha and we're now changing the orientation of that rotation until it matches the van in the background, which that looks pretty good. And um, we're going to copy and paste the same exact text, but we're going to put an X in there and we're going to get the same 3D source alpha on the timeline uh, with the positioning of the same exact text. That way we can have it right below it with just a little X and make it say type X, even though it has two individual timelines we're working with just one word there and now we're gonna put a whole layer of PSI logos right here on this box to make it look like it's been there the whole time so we're gonna have to figure out a way to do that as well figure out the right font so now we got two PSI logos and we're just gonna continue to copy and paste those until we have three all about just resizing in the 3d source alpha menu and uh, you can even plug them in digitally but I figure that's um, scrubbing is a lot easier again scrubbing just means by putting them in manually with your mouse. So there you go. That's how I make all my video thumbnails on XO Contralto and XO A Big Deal. I hope I helped you a little bit. And if you're a partner, utilize this ability because it's sure fun. And it makes it a really cool viewing experience. You know, when you go through your other videos, just to scroll through all the pictures that you've made, it, it's pretty cool. So I hope I could help you guys a little bit. And that was pretty much it, guys. I will talk to you in the next video. I hope I could help you out just a little this bit. Again, these friggin' tutorial videos are really hard to make. So thanks for watching if you endured it. Talk to you guys in a little bit. EXO signing out. Wachikala!